Hello everyone and welcome to my channel DevOps Mela. This is Rohit Singh and welcome to my new Azure security video series. So guys, recently I have conducted a pool on my channel asking people kindly poll which cloud security video should I make. So you can see it clearly. 88% people want me to make a video on Azure security. So thank you guys uh, and here we go as promised. Here we are with Azure security series video. Okay. So let's start. Let's start with the introduction and let's see what what exactly we're going to do in this complete series. Okay. If I want to define Azure security on a high level, uh, this can be broadly classified into these categories. Cloud cloud platform security. So in cloud pl platform, you will have VM security. You will have uh, database security and many things then we'll have access policy and control and we can even define it as data application security we can even define it as identifying security threads and taking required action so basically it's it's just few pointers on azure security azure security topic itself is very big and covering entirely would be a very difficult task for me okay but still i've given given a try and have covered those topics which you would be using in in your day-to-day -day life in your real life scenario okay like working with azure virtual network definitely if you're even creating a vm a virtual machine you will definitely create a virtual network so we'll focus what exactly is network security group what is application security group over here we'll see how a vnet is created how a subnet is created and things like that we'll have a practical demo if you guys are new to my channel, so I I always follow a principle of 85% practical and only 15% theoretical where, wherever it is required. And if you are existing a subscriber, you know already that I focus more on practical stuff. Okay. So each topic which is mentioned over here will have a demo at the end. So don't miss out on that. The next will be Azure Key Vault. Key Vault is a very important service in Azure. How do we secure our secrets? How do we secure our certificates? How do we secure your tokens and things like that? So that is what we'll see over here. And at the end, I'll be integrating Azure Key Vault with Azure DevOps. So I already have a course on Azure DevOps wherein I've seen multiple comments where, wherein people are asking, how do we integrate Azure Key, Vo Key Vault with Azure DevOps? So this is the right opportunity for me wherein I can show you that. Okay. Then we'll see into Azure Active Directory. We'll see what is managed identity, what is service principle, how do we uh, create a service principles and things like that. Over here, we'll even see how do we create service connection because in order to achieve the below point, uh, like integrating Azure Keyword with Azure DevOps, you, you should know how do we create a service connection, connection between your key, uh, between your keyword and Azure DevOps between your cloud and Azure DevOps, how exactly that connection is created. For creating that connection, you will need service principle. How exactly service principle is created. All this thing is pure practical, which I have covered over here. Later, we'll see Azure endpoints. We'll, we'll cover service endpoints, we'll cover private endpoints, and, we'll, and then, then we'll see how exactly we can access storage account using private endpoint that is a demo which i will cover later then we'll see last but but not the least azure defenders what exactly azure defender is what exactly cloud defender is and at the end we'll cover what exactly is just in time access just in time virtual machine machine access that is the demo which we'll see we'll have a complete walkthrough of azure defenders first then later we'll have a end-to-end -end demo on just-in-time virtual machine access so let's start let's start with azure virtual network in my next video please if you guys are new to this channel please subscribe and put down your comments if there's a if there's any other service you want me to cover hello and welcome to my channel devops Mela and welcome to my azure devops series in this tutorial we'll talk about azure virtual network so we basically we'll talk about virtual networking so azure virtual network we can call it as vnet is the fundamental building block for your private network in azure 
okay so basically vnet enables many types of azure resources so what could be a resource a storage account a sql database azure virtual machine these are resources okay to securely communicate with each other or to internet or to on prem network so there are multiple services service what a vnet provides one of the services communicate with on prem uh, on prem resources so if you have a data center and if you want to communicate your uh, communicate to your data center through your azure cloud okay so you can establish point to point vpn there is a service called express route which you can use or if you want to communicate between azure resources so you can create a virtual network that is what we'll talk about now and you can even use service point service endpoint this is something we'll talk at the end and we can even do vnet peering there's an option called filter net traffic we'll talk about filter traffic in details coming forth and there's an option called route network traffic so where you want to route your traffic depends so these are some services what vnet provides what we will focus on will focus on filter network traffic so we'll create a vnet and we'll focus on communicating between azure resources wherein we'll be creating a virtual network by ourselves okay so filter network traffic will filter traffic between subnets okay so it will be using NSG, ASG. NSG is nothing but it's a network security group. AG stands for application security group or network virtual appliances. Okay. So what we'll focus on, we'll focus on two things. We'll uh, we'll see how a virtual network works and we'll focus on filter network traffic. So keeping that in mind, let's understand what exactly is NSG, that is network security group, and what exactly is application security group. So if I just read out the definition, NSGs can contain multiple inbound and an outbound security rules that enable you to filter traffic to and from resources by source and destination IP address. So this is a very typical definition which I'm reading out. Let's break it down and let's understand in a layman language. Imagine you stay in a 10 story building. Okay. And at the main gate, there is no gatekeeper there is no security guard so what what will be the consequence anyone can enter your building and anyone can go out any given point of time there is no restriction now think of putting a security guard keeping a security guard at the main gate who is constantly checking everyone who is entering the building checking with them where exactly which floor which room number you want to go and based on whether he has access, whether he that particular person has required access and permission, he will then allow the person to enter the building. Same goes over here in network security. Imagine you have a front end uh, application running on Azure virtual machine and you have given access only to 443 port and someone with the port 80 is trying to access your web application. Will it allow? No. Imagine you are given an access on uh, SSS access on port 22. Someone else is trying to access on some other port. Okay. So such if you, it will set up multiple inbounds and outbound security rules for you. Okay. So there are various energies can be attached to subnet. This is something we'll see now. Now think about application security group. Now think you stay on uh, floor fifth. Okay. And you have two apartments. You have apartment number 501 and 502. You have stopped all access to apartment 502. Like no one can directly access 502. The doors are closed. The doors are shut. No one can directly go into 502. If they want to access 502, they have to come through 501. Okay. That is the same what application security groups does. Logical grouping of VMs. Okay. So we'll see all this in details. So what, what do I mean by logical grouping? Think of I have a front end application and I have back end application. So back end that is my database. So I don't want anyone from outside world to go and access my database. Okay. So this way we can do a logical grouping using application security group. If I read out the definition, application security groups enable you to configure network security allowing you to group virtual machines and define network security policies based on those two okay how exactly this is done let's see the flow let's let's try and understand nsg and asg more in details 
before we go and do the practical stuff. Okay, let's understand this flow. Okay, on the left hand side I have internet. So people are trying to connect from internet on this 443 port to my virtual network. So this box, the rectangle box, big box is your virtual network. Okay, in this virtual network I have two subnets created. So if you see the subnet 10.0.1.0 slash 24 and the other one is dot 2 dot 0 slash 24. I have two subnets created. Ignore the NSGs for now. Imagine there's no NSG. So if there's no NSG, anyone can access this for application. Both my servers, any, anyone can come inside, they can log in and anyone can access. Now putting an NSG, Network Security Group and allowing only 443 port. So if anyone trying to access this, they will have to access uh, access only through 443 port to my front end application. But as soon as they try to access my back end uh, back end server, which is in a different subnet, and in in the NSG we have not allowed any port, no 443, no 222, nothing we have allowed. So what will happen when anyone try to access it from the internet? To my backend server, the access would be denied. No one can access because I have created, I have grouped into AG. So what what condition I have created? I have created a condition that only a user can access this backend server through VM1. Okay, so we have grouped this ASG. Now many people will say, why do we need ASG only? Why can't we simply give the source IP and the destination? Yeah, I agree. Even that will work. In the energy, if you can give the source IP and destination, even that will work. But think, this is a simple example where, wherein I just have two VMs. Think in a real world scenario wherein you will have 100 of VMs and in your backend you will have 20, 30 VMs. Will you go and assign IPs each time? Is it a feasible option? Definitely no. Grouping VMs into ASG in an application security group makes more sense. Rest you can put down in comments and you can let me know your feedback. What is the best approach you think of? Okay. Now imagine I am trying to access the same backend server through VM1. So as soon as I try to access the backend server through VM1, I get the access. I am able to access my backend server through VM1. Okay. So this ex the whole scenario wherein the front end application is getting access through cloud on 443 and the back end we are just giving access through VM1. That's it. So what all things we have? We have a virtual network. We have two subnets. We have NSGs and we have VMs. So let's go and look. Uh, let's go and uh, look this scenario, this complete scenario in real life. Okay. Let's go on to my portal. Okay, the first thing is I'll be going and creating virtual network. So let's look for virtual network. Hopefully you understood what exactly I'm trying to do. Okay, so the first thing is we'll go and create a virtual network with the name VNet1. And let me create a resource group first. DevOps Mila RG. Um, give a virtual network name as VNet1. We need hyphen one. Let's give it this way. And I'll create in. Let's create somewhere in East US. No specific reason why I'm creating in East US. I have a default subnet. Over, this is the IP range what we have right now. So I'm not making any changes over there. And I do have a default subnet over here. Let's go and add a few more subnets. So I'll add one subnet for VM1. I'll give a range as 10.0. Dot, give a range as 10.0.1.0 slash 24. NAT gateway service endpoint just ignore it for now. I'll create one more subnet. So in my case, I'll, I'll be just creating one VM for my front end and one VM for my database. I'll give a DB1. I'll give a subnet. Uh, to this, I'll give a range. So it's a two different subnet which we are creating. 2.0 slash 24. Okay. 
I'll add this security there's nothing it's okay so I'll okay let's do one thing it will take around one or two minutes let's do one thing let's come back once the Vina, the Vina virtual network is created okay guys so I have the VNet created so we got this VNet created so let's go back and see okay so we have this VNet we have the subnet created now we need to create VMs so I'll be creating VM1 and DB1 let's go ahead and create VM quickly So I'll go in virtual machine, I'll create a VM. So I'll be creating a VM in one subnet one and the next VM will be created in subnet two. So this is the resource group what we have. So I'll just name it as VM one in caps. East US, yes, uh, I will have the option. Okay, no changes. Ubuntu, I'll select Ubuntu 18.04. So size, I'll select standard B1. Password I'll select as username. I'll give it as username or password. I'm not using SSH keys for now. I've covered this SSH part in my ASP.NET video. Please check the playlist in that case. Okay. Ports I'll allow 22 ports for now. Disk is okay. 30 GB is totally fine for me. Okay. In the virtual network, I'll select the virtual network which we just created. And in subnet, we'll create the VM1 subnet. Public IP, a public IP, IP would be created. That's totally fine for me because we need public IP to access the VM. In the management, I'll just disable the boot diagnostic. I don't want unnecessary things to run in the backend. So here we go. So I'm good with the VM1 creation. Similarly, I'll, I'll create VM2. Okay, let's let, let me create VM2 and VM1 quickly and let's come back once the VMs are created. Okay, so I got both the VMs created. I have VM1. So if you see, I have assigned a VM1, a public IP. And I do have a DB1. So I have not assigned any public IP to the DB because that is something I want to connect internally, not from outside world. Okay, so let's go and see the flow again so we got this virtual network we got this subnets and we got the respected vms now let me do one thing let me try to connect this particular vm the vm1 from my local system okay so i'm just opening a dos i'll try and do a ssh and let's see if i'm able to connect or not Okay, so I think I'm able to connect. Let me put the password. Perfect. So I'm inside a VM1, right? We need to do next. The next is either uh, I'll create an ASG and I'll group this particular VMs or I can create an ASG to group this particular VM. So any in, in my scenario, this is a very simple and straightforward scenario. So I would I would just need one ASG. One things to remember, NSG was automatically created. NSG1 and NSG2 was automatically created when I created the VM. Okay. So if you go and if you want to look into NSG, now let's go into all resources. And if you see the NSGs are already created, VM1 NSG and you'll see a VM2 NSG as well, a DB, DB1 NSG as well. So if you go and look into the DB1 NSG, inbound security rules, we have allowed 22 port, okay, but we don't have any public IP assigned. So this is not even needed, guys. So let's delete this because when we'll create ASG, that will be more than sufficient. So this is not needed. I'll just go and remove this 22 port. Now what I have to do, I'll go and create an ASG. So I just put an a, write ASG at the top. I'll write application security group. Let's create an ASG first. And then I'll show how exactly we assign ASG. Okay, let's name it as VM1 ASG. Okay, review and create. So hardly it will take 10 seconds to create ASG. Okay, do one thing let's come back when the ASG is created 
Okay guys, so the ASG was created. This is my ASG which I have created. Now let's go and attach this ASG to virtual machine one. So what exactly we are trying to do? We are trying to group this part into ASG one. Okay, let's see that. Okay, so VM one, I'll go inside VM one. Inside networking, there is an option called application security groups. Okay, inside application security group, click on configure application security group. And in your drop down, you'll see VM1 ASG. One, one thing, uh, one important thing over here, this may take time because it took around four or five minutes for me to reflect to get this uh, after creating ASG to get this information over here. So have some patience and wait for some time before you go and create ASGs. Okay. So I'll go ahead and create, save this. So what exactly I'm doing, I'm linking my ASG to this virtual machine. So guys, we have successfully linked our VM1 ASG. Okay. So in case you guys are not able to view your ASG group inside this, so wait for three, four minutes. It, it took around three, four minutes for me to get this ASG listed inside this particular dropdown. Okay. So this is the first step. You have to, once you create your ASG, you have to link your ASG with your respected VM. Then go back to the second VM or I would say then to the network security group of database where exactly you want to add this. So I'll go back to the DBNSG and over here I will link my ASG which I have created. So I don't have any ports open right now. So we cannot access this particular DB1 server so what what exactly we are looking for we want to access this db1 server only from vm1 server okay so for that we have already created a asg1 and we have grouped vm1 in asg1 and i'm not creating asg2 that is not needed because this is just a simple one-to-one -one connection which i'm trying to do but in your case please do create AG, asg2 as well for your practice okay so I will just go ahead and create a rule, a inbound rule in which my source this this time would be my ASG group which I have created. The source port I'll keep it star all ports. Destination I'll keep it any. But if you suppose if you're creating ASG two, then your destination should be ASG two. Okay. For now I just keep any, and the service I'll allow twenty two. SSH. So that's port twenty two which I will. <coughs> sorry the port 22 which i will allow and i'll just name it as port underscore 22 this way so let me add this rule and the priority is given as 100 that's the highest priority so that is the rule which will run at the very first okay now if you see this i have this port added priority 100 port 22 port number allowed 22 protocol TCP source from where the traffic will come that is from my VM1 and the destination is any okay so let's go ahead and test it now let's go back to my VM1 first okay so I got this public IP address uh, let me go and connect to this server first quickly so I'm using my DOS so there's no need of putty or such you can even use dos that works very well okay so let me connect to this server okay perfect i'm able to connect to vm1 right now now let's go back to vm2 not vm2 to the db2 and see if i'm able if i'm able to connect ah uh, not db2 it's a db1 that is what we are looking for db1 okay now I don't have a public IP address. I have not as a, as I have not assigned any public IP address, and this is the private IP address from which I'll try to connect. Let me test this first locally. If I'm able to reach out to this server, definitely not. This is a private IP address. Will not be able to reach out to this server directly or from any other VM because we have just specifically we have mentioned just from VM one. So I should not be able to connect. So no, it's not allowing me. So let's cancel this, close this and come back to this screen 
and let's connect from inside now from inside vm1 yeah i'm able to connect now like see let me go in here we go guys i am inside db1 now if you see i'm inside db1 so this is how virtual networking works this is a very simple example what we have seen wherein trying to connect from internet on poco 3 port you are able to access vm1 but if you try to con uh, access the db1 server you will not be able to connect the only way you can connect the db1 server is it through if you are connecting from the vm1 with the help of asg again it's a very simple example you can achieve this by just adding the source ip address also but i just wanted to demonstrate the importance and the benefit of using asg if you have a good number of servers okay that's it from this session uh, in the next session we'll talk about key vault azure key vault so if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and put down in the comment what you like and what what do you dislike about this video thank you goodbye hello all and welcome to azure security series in this video tutorial will talk about azure key vault okay basically what exactly is key vault and what all problem real life real time problem key vault will solve let's see so basically key vault will help you with secret management so if you have any access token password certificates api keys these are very critical information okay so you need to keep this securely so azure key vault can help you it, it will provide you a space wherein you can put all this information securely with limited access to the person who has created okay and it can even help you with key management so if you have any encryption keys which you need to save so here, here is the place even you can put keys in your azure key vault certificate management all your tls ssl certificates your public private key certificates everything you can put it in azure key vault so what are the features if you talk about azure key vault feature it's a centralized application secret it can store centralized application secrets it can securely store secrets and keys as we all know it does secret management it can monitor access so who is monitoring and things like that everything you can monitor it it can simplify administration of application secrets so all your application secrets can be easily administered in azure key vault we can even integrate azure key vault with other uh, azure services like in my case in our case we'll be integrating azure key vault with azure devops okay let's go ahead and create a azure key vault first and let's see how it goes let's go back to the portal Okay guys, let's go ahead and create a key vault. I do have a key vault I can write over here, but if you want to look for, you can look in, at the top in the search box, key vaults. Let's go ahead and create a new key vault. So the resource group, I don't have a resource group. So let me create a resource group as well. So I'll name it as DevOps Mela hyphen. No, just name it as DevOps Mela RG. That is a resource group. And the key vault name, I'll name it as devops mela hyphen keys make sure this name is unique if this name is not unique you may get error now if you want to see i just remove the word mela because devops mela is a unique name as it's my channel name you definitely should get an error yeah that's you're getting an error so it's better to use devops mela hyphen keys and these regions and pricing tier i'll keep it as it is the only the day days to retain so the minimum is you can keep it for seven days so i'll keep it for seven days purge protection i'll keep it as it is access policy so this is an important part so what type of permission model so key vault supports both it supports rbac as well as a vault access policy for this session we'll stick with vault access policy and even you can enable all these services like if you want to give key vault access to your virtual machine if you, if you want to use key vault in your arm templates or encrypt or encrypting your disk so you can if you want to use your key vault over there you can enable all this option so for now i'll stick with vault access policy and i'll go ahead and add a access policy as well so 
or you can give all the key secret and certificate permissions so i'll just keep it as it is you need to select your service principle so guys i have uh, like in my previous video uh, i'll be creating a service principle uh, sorry uh, excuse me not in previous the upcoming video right after this uh, i'll be covering what exactly is service principle what exactly is managed identity how do we create a service connection because later we would be integrating this particular keyword with our Azure DevOps CI CD pipeline. So do check my service connection video, then you'll understand how exactly I've created a service principle. For, for now, I already have a service principle created, so I'll be using that service principle. Mm, let me see what is the name of the service principle I have created. Okay, this is a service principle which I have already created. Plus, don't get confused. Please do check my upcoming video in which I have demonstrated how exactly a service principle is created and how exactly we can create a service connection. Okay. For networking, I can keep it as all network for now. But if you want to secure your keyword more, you can have selected network and you can even have private endpoints. Okay. So I'll go ahead and review and create this keyword. Let's let's wait for a while because this creation may take around one or two minutes. So let me come back once the keyword is created. Thank you. Okay, all the keyword was successfully created. This is a keyword which was created. Let's go and look inside it. Okay, so I have the keyword created. Now the next part is let me go ahead and create secrets. Okay, so in settings I'll go in secrets. There's an option to generate. So there are multiple options. You can upload it. You can do it manually or you can upload it to a certificate. So I'll click manual. I'll name it as DevOps Mela. I'll pass it a value, a password. So I'll set an activation date now. I'll activate now uh, once I create this keyword. I'll enable the keyword and that's it. Expiration if you want to uh, set an expiration date. You can do that as well in my case i'm not doing that okay so here we go guys even we have the secret created if you go inside it if you go inside the current version you can even view the secret value okay this is i am able to do it because i'm the owner of this particular portal i'm the owner and I'm logged in as devops mailer so if you have all required access you can view go and view the secret as well everyone will not have access to uh, view the secrets remember that okay so that's it from th this session please watch the service connection session which is coming up next post that we'll have one more keyword session wherein we'll integrate the keyword with the we'll integrate the keyword which we just created with our azure ci cd pipeline thank you if you're new to this channel please do subscribe thank you hello all in this uh, session we'll talk about azure devops service connection We'll understand what exactly is service connection. We'll see few example. Later, we'll create service connection. Uh, we'll create service connection by aut automation and we'll create service connection manually. Okay. If you guys are new to this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Okay. Thank you. Let's start. So a service connection enables you to connect to external and remote services to execute tasks in a job. For example, if you want to connect to Azure Cloud, so you need to set up an Azure subscription service connection. Okay. So like you have a Azure DevOps, you need to create a service connection and post that you can connect to Azure Cloud and post that all the resources of Azure. You can make use of web app. You can make use of Azure Kubernetes service. You can make use of Azure containers. So, in order to access all Azure resources and services, you need to firstly you need to create a service connection. Similarly, to a different build service or to a file server. If you want to connect to a different build server, for example, if you want to connect to a SonarQ server, wherein you want to run a, a static code analytics, so you need to again create a service connection. If you want to create uh, connect to a Git Git repository like GitHub, GitLab. Again, you need to set up a service connection. So these are few examples 
by which for which you need service connection without that you cannot communicate or interact or do any and anything so a service connection is very much essential so we'll see uh, further like there are multiple ways of creating a service connection we'll see two ways in which in the first way i'll be creating a u in a user and using azure ad and we'll set up a service connection in the second we'll start with creating a app registration we'll register our app and we'll make use of microsoft identity platform which can provide authentication and authorization to our application and the users on it okay so let's see the second method first we'll create a azure app registration we'll do a app registration and we'll create a service re register connection based on that okay. let me go back to my portal i'm in azure cloud right now i'll just go in azure active directory i'll go in app registration i'll click on new registration i'll just give a random name as web app okay i'll keep the default option i don't have any url if you have a url for your application you can mention that over here okay so my app web app has been created i'll go back to my cloud portal again so as of now we have just created and we have just registered our app it's we have not given any access okay so we need to firstly go ahead and provide a subscription access so i'll just go this is my subscription pay as you go if you want to have a look where exactly your subscription is just look for subscription and this is the only subscription what i have right now in this account so i'll just select that i'll go in access control and i'll go in a role assessment as of now this is the only role provided so this is given to the owner i'll just click on add role add role assessments i'll select the role for now i just give a owner access i'll give my web, web application name that's web app i'll select it save so i've created i've registered my app i've given the required access to my app now let's go back to a devops azure devops portal go in project settings as if now i don't have any sub service connection in this account so i'll just create a new one so we'll create azure resource manager service connection because we want to access azure cloud services okay i'll do it manually this time i'll show you automated automatic way as well so for now we'll do it manually let's go to next is asking for a subscription id as i go in my subscription overview i'll get my subscription id right over here i'll just copy it paste it over here subscription name i'll just select my subscription name as pay as you go service principle that this is looking for my app service principle so i'm in my web app in this i'll select application id as my service principle service principle key we may have to generate a service principle key in in your app go in certificates and secrets and this click on new client secrets give any name like i'll just name it as web app expiry you can select your expiry just click on add we have the value now so i'll just copy this value i'll paste it right over here now, tenant id again going back in my web app overview we have a tenant id right over here just copy this come back put it over here let's verify and see if everything is working good so here we go the verification was successful now let's give a name to this service service connection 
we'll name it as Azure trial. Okay. Give whatever name you want. I'll just do a verify and save. Okay, so we have this service connection created. Okay. Now if I go back to my pipelines, if I want to use this service connection, I'll go and release. I'll click new pipeline. Let's add any stage. Okay, I'm getting an error now because this settings are required. So we already have service connection created. That's the only service connection what we have created. If I just go in drop down, if you see this, I have this Azure trial created. Okay, I can use this. Okay, I can use this now and we can create a build pipeline. So this was one way in which I have made use of service uh, app registration option and have created a service connection. The other way which we were discussing of creating a new user in Azure AD. Okay, let's go and see that way also. Okay, I am logged in currently as a uh, DevOps mail at gmail.com. Okay, and my portal, if you quickly have a look on my portal, over here I am logged in as test.rohitks at gmail. So th these are two different accounts what we are using. Okay, so let's go in my Azure AD. I just wanted to show that I am using two different accounts. My Azure DevOps account is different. My Azure Azure Cloud account is different. Okay. Now let's go in user. Now I'll create a guest user. I'll create a user based on invite base. So I'll name it as DevOps. Email ID was DevOps mailer at gmail.com. First name I'll name it as DevOps itself. Last name I'll give it as Mela. This is my channel. If you guys are not subscribed, please subscribe. I'll keep uh, all the information as it is. If you want to put some job information, title, and those things, you can do that. I'll go and click and create this user first. Okay, we have successfully created an a user a guest user right now and the invitation has been sent on my email id we'll see that later i'll just click on this user as of now th this user has not been given any roles or responsibilities so we'll firstly go and assign some roles to it so i'll click on assign roles and i'll click on add assignments in this i for now i'll just give a global admin role to this user Okay, I've given the global admin role. Till now, the user can't access anything using the pipeline. So we'll go and again add. We'll give access to this subscription to the newly user what we have created. So I'll go and access control roles. So in this, I just have my web app which we created earlier. We don't have that user added. So let's go and add that user first. Add role assessment. Again, I'll give a owner you owner access. If you see, I have this guest user right right over here. I'll select that. I'll save it. Okay, we have assigned the role, but still we cannot access this user cannot access the pipeline. Okay, now go back. I'll open my email. I might have received an invitation from Microsoft. So I'll just go and accept that invitation. This is not the latest email. This is the latest email which I have received. Sign out and sign in. Oh, 
okay i'll go and accept it so done three steps what we have we did over here we did firstly we created the guest user we assigned roles to the user then we given required access to the user okay in my subscription we want to have a look if the user is added or not so here we go the user has been added over here now let's go back to our pipelines now let's create a new pipeline again let's add a stage now this time just let's refresh it now if you go if you see i'm getting pay as you go right now okay the subscription which you see below that does not belongs to this cloud that belongs to a different cloud account okay so pay as you go cf7b this is the cf7b this is the subscription what we use so we can see that subscription now i'll select this we need to authorize so what exactly it will do when you click on authorize in the back end it will create a service connection for you okay let's click on authorize it will prompt you for the user id and password here we go okay let's wait for this author authorization it may take around 10 15 seconds let's wait okay now if you see it's been authorized we are ready to use this subscription now i'll show you in the back end what exactly has happened if i go back to my project setting service connection you see there's a service connection created if i go back over here we can manage a service connection if i go and click on this connection rules it will take me back to pay as you go and it will take me back to the access control wherein if we can see the access given now if you see we have a app registered automatically devops mela web app it got registered automatically so lastly uh, in in the pre uh, when we were doing things manually even we have created a web app now even in automatic way a web app was a app was registered and a contributor access was given now if i go in the service principle see in the service principle of a app, app application id your tenant id and if you go in secrets we have a secrets created so this is what we did manually the same thing happens when you do it through automatic way okay so that's it from this lecture uh if you guys have any queries any doubts or if you have any suggestion please put it in the comment box and please subscribe thanks for watching have a good day goodbye hello all and welcome to my channel devops mela so in this video tutorial we'll see how exactly we can integrate a key vault which we have created in my previous video with my azure devops pipeline but before we do that hopefully you have seen my service connection video which I have just covered just before this because service connection is important without service connection you cannot connect your Azure DevOps to access Azure cloud resources okay so let's go and let's check so this is a key vault which we have created that is DevOps Mela hyphen keys this is the key vault which we have created and we have created a, a secret as well with the name DevOps Mela and we have given all the required access policy so i have given this access policy to my service principal okay if you have not seen my previous video please go and check the service connection uh, video because that is very important if you want to learn how do we integrate azure devops with azure cloud resources okay let's go back on my azure devops that is dev.azure.com i'll go to one of my project and inside this project i'll show you i already have a service connection created so I already have a service connection created. Now I'll see how exactly a key vault gets integrated. There are two ways. One, one of the ways you can create a release pipeline. 
and you can call the key vault directly into your release or a build pipeline both will be fine let me give you a demo of how we can integrate a key vault into a release pipeline there are multiple ways of integrating one of the ways if we go inside click on task add a key vault task okay so this is one of the way wherein you can go and look for your subscription this is a subscription which we have created service connection what we that is my subscription and this will be only visible when you create a service connection on the key key vault i'm getting my key vault now devops mela hyphen keys secrets to filter if you put this star all the keys will get filtered all the keys will get downloaded okay so let's save this and if you when you when you run this pipeline this key will get downloaded and this key can be integrated with any of your uh, task uh, just assume that i have a sql dacpack task and and the keys which i'm using it contains a sql user id and password i'm just giving an example to you you can call that key directly over here using the key vault you can call that particular secret and uh, directly over here and automatically when you run this pipeline the first task is the key vault will get downloaded it will connect to your azure cloud it will connect to the azure key vault it will download the secret then later you can use that secret inside this particular task okay that is one way i just don't want to run it now just remove it let me save this and let me show you how exactly the keys get downloaded first then i'll show you a better way of integrating key vault with azure devops okay let's wait it should it should hardly take around 5 10 minutes sorry not 5 10 seconds i mistake not not minutes so let's wait for a while okay guys now if you'll see the pipeline was successful so the key vault part what we had the keys was successfully downloaded So this is one way of integrating your Azure Key Vault with your Azure CI/CD pipeline. The other way and the better way, which I believe, is adding a variables. How exactly that could be that can be done is going inside pipeline. There is a section called library. Over here, you can create a variable group. I have covered in details what exactly is variable group in my Azure DevOps session. Please do check my playlist. I have covered variable group in detail. For now, let's understand. I can create a variable group and I can link this variable group with my key vault. So this is how we can link. So this is the I can select my key vault name over here. Once once that is selected, I can go and add my secrets over here. So I have only one secret that is DevOps Mela. I can go and add. So this is created as a variable now. I can call this variable in whichever pipelines I want. If I have hundred of pipelines and I want to call the secrets in in those hundred of pipelines, so I can easily call it using this variable group. So this is the easiest way of integrating your Azure Key Vault with your Azure DevOps CI/CD pipeline. Okay, and whenever it's needed, like once I have this variable group created, I can call this variable group in my pipeline by linking. So let's take an example. I don't have a pipeline to demo it for now. Let's use this pipeline itself. Uh, let me edit the pipeline. Go in variable. I can add a variable group. So now I have a new variable group with the new, the date and all. So here we go. And inside this variable group, I have this. So wherever I need this secrets to be used, I can simply call this as a variable. Okay. So that's it from Azure Key Vault integration session. in the next session we'll see what exactly is azure endpoints okay please do check my channel and please do subscribe thank you bye bye hello all and welcome to my channel devops mela this is rohit singh and welcome to azure security series today we'll talk about azure endpoints so basically what exactly endpoints is so endpoint is something which will allow you to securely connect your critical azure service resources okay so there are two type of endpoints which we'll see in azure mainly known as a uh, private endpoint and service endpoint so what exactly private endpoints are so private endpoint will allow you to access azure 
batch service over a private IP address and then that, that too within your virtual network. So within your virtual network, if you have any pass service, the pass service could be your storage account, it could be a SQL database server, it could be a virtual machine, etc. So it will allow you to privately connect to those services using private endpoint. So how exactly it works, we'll see that. So basically it will provide a new private IP to your VNet and it will send traffic to pass. And it will make sure the traffic stays within your virtual network. That is what private endpoint is. On the other hand, we have a service endpoint. So service endpoint provides a secure and direct connectivity to the Azure PaaS service over an optimized route, which we call it as Azure Backbone Network. But in service endpoint, your traffic will still left your VNet and it will hit the public endpoint of the PaaS service. Okay, let's let's see this with a graph. Let's see this with a the flow. Then we'll understand more. Okay, now on the left hand side, if you see, I have a virtual network that's VNet one. I have two VM, VM one, VM two, and to this virtual network, there's a NIC card attached. So how exactly this happens? Let's see. So using a private network, you have a storage account. Okay, in the cloud, you have a storage account. So you want to access this storage account using your respected VMs inside your virtual network. So if you're using private endpoint, what does private endpoint do? A private endpoint will attach a NIC card to your virtual network and it will allocate a private IP. And the communication happens between the storage account and the VM over the private IP. So even though in the graph it's showing that it's going out from your VNet, but it's a it's all the traffic is sent across using your private IP. It's completely private. So it's completely private networking communication which is happening. Okay. On the other hand, when you're using service endpoint, the service endpoint, your traffic moves out of your VNet and over a secure channel that call that we call it as Azure Backbone Network, and it reaches the storage account and the connection is established. This is what the major difference between a private endpoint and a service endpoint is. In the, in the private endpoint, the traffic will the traffic will not leave your VNet, wherein in your uh, storage uh, service endpoint, the traffic will come out of your VNet and using a Azure Backbone Network, it will connect to your resources. Okay, so now let's see this example, the private endpoint example in practical. Let's go back to our Azure portal and let's create a storage account and let's create a private endpoint and let's using a uh, VM, let's try to connect to the storage account. Okay, let's go back to the portal quickly. Now I'll go back to the storage account. I'll create a storage account right over here. Let me create a storage account. Let me create a resource. I already have a resource group DevOps Mela RG. The storage account, I'll name it as, okay, I already have existing name, DevOps Mela SA. The region I'll select as Central India. There's no specific reason why I'm selecting Central India. Only is I, I, I am from India, so I'm just selecting Central India so that the data center could be nearby. That could be the only reason. I'll be local RL, LRS advanced. I'll keep all this option as it is. In the VNet, the only thing I'll do is disable public access. I don't want publicly access this particular storage account and use private access only and as soon as i select i'm getting a private endpoint option at the very bottom so what i'll do i'll go ahead and create a private endpoint you can even enable private endpoint on an existing storage account that is something we'll see later okay now i'll just name this private endpoint as devops mela pe private endpoint Storage service or block. So I can do it for table, file, queue as well. For now, I'll just stick with block. For all the other resources, it, it the way of creation would be the same. No difference. I, I do have a virtual network as I said. We need to we need to define the virtual network as well. So I do have an existing virtual network in which I'll create this. So VNet1, and this is a subnet. 
which I have created in my previous sessions. And if you see, a DNS is also getting created. Okay. So I'll just click OK. All these informations are OK for me. Data protection, I definitely don't want this soft delete thing for now because I'll be deleting everything once the recording is completed. Encryption type and support, totally fine. I'll go ahead and review and I'll create it. This creation may take time because uh, we are creating storage account plus private network and many things we are creating. So let's come back once everything is created. Okay, so the resource was created. It took more than five minutes because multiple resources were getting created, like private DNS, endpoints, storage account. Okay, let's go and look into the resource. Now, this is my storage account, and if I just come back in security and networking, inside networking, under private endpoint, so this is where my private endpoint was created. So, how do we verify uh, if only through that particular VNet we can access this private endpoint. So we can verify it using a DNS name or a, a name server. So if I go inside my private endpoint, inside DNS configuration, I have a FTDN, the fully qualified domain name. If I try to access this from my local system by running a simple NS lookup command, So, what exactly it is trying to resolve? If you see this, it's trying to resolve public DNS. Let me just rerun it one more time. Now, if you see this, it is giving you the public IP. So, we were able to access. Now, if you see, it, it's able to resolve the name server, but that is happening on a public IP. So, as we all know, we have already disabled public access. So there is no way anyone can access this particular storage account over a public network now how do we access privately so we have given this uh, uh, we have created this private endpoint on a spe specific vnet that was vnet 1 so i do have a server a virtual machine which was created on vnet 1 let me see if i log in through it let me just log in through it now if you see this this networking inside networking this was created on vnet 1 Okay, now let me quickly go and log in. Let's just search to that particular server. Let me SSH with the public IP. Now let me run the ns lookup command over here and let's see what we are getting. So ns lookup is basically a tool which will help you to find the name server. Okay. Let's go back to my storage account and let's copy the DNS name. Okay, let's go and look for the DNS name. And ns lookup is a tool which will help you to find out DNS name information. Okay. Let's go in networking, private endpoints. Let's go and look for the FPDN, fully qualified domain name, DNS configuration. This is what I'm looking for. Okay, let's go inside the server. Now let's run the NS looker from here. Now, if you see the difference, it's resolving the private IP and only the private link. It's not giving you the public IP route. That is because uh, I have given access and uh, we have created a private endpoint on this specific VNet and this particular server, VM1, this is hosted on that particular VM. So, if you want to access the storage account, we can access that particular storage account only from this particular VM. And in future, whatever VMs we create, if it is created in inside that particular virtual network, then you can access. So that is what we are trying to understand. From this VNet, VM1, we have connected to the storage account. Okay, that's it from this session. In the next session, we'll talk about Azure Defenders. 
If you are new to this channel, please like, share and subscribe. If you are an existing subscriber, please put down your thoughts in the comments. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Hello all, welcome to my channel DevOps Mela and welcome to my Azure security series. In today's tutorial, we'll talk about Azure Defender. Okay, so Azure Defender, what exactly it is, let's understand that. And it's a very important aspect in Azure security. Okay, so Defender for Cloud, it's also known as Defender for Cloud, is a tool for security, posture management and threat protection. So what exactly is security posture management? So security posture management, that is CSPM, it will automate the identification and remediation of risk across cloud infrastructure. It will help you automating identification if there's any risk and it will even help you to remediate those. Okay. So this particular tool will help you with multiple problem statement. It will resolve your multiple problem statements such as if there's a need to harden your resources, this can help you out with that. It can even track your security posture. It can even protect you against cyber attacks and it can even streamline your security management. So these are the high level what exactly a cloud defender does. It does continue continuously assessment. It will secure you. Uh, it will harden your resources. It will secure you and it will even defend you. Okay. So that that is about cloud defender. Now, if we, if we talk about pricing tier, so why exactly I've added this pricing tier? Let me tell you Azure Defender is by default enabled on your on each subscription. Okay. Even though it gives you very limited uh, features in your free tier, like it, it, it will just provide you, uh, it includes continuous assessment. It will give you security recommendation on top of it. It will give you secure scores. It will score your resources. Okay. The beauty of Defender comes in when you take the paid service. Okay. So when you enable Microsoft Defender, that is where uh, you get most most of the benefits of Microsoft Defender. So Microsoft Defender, what what all features it will give? It will defend your endpoints. It will it will do a vulnerability assessment on your virtual machine, registry, SQL Server. It will do uh, it will even there are multiple clouds. If you have resources on multiple clouds like AWS, GSP, so it, it can run those capabilities of assessment and things on those uh, cloud providers as well. Okay. And there are many. Among this, there's one advanced feature what I like the most in, uh, in Microsoft Defender is just in, just in time VM access. So this is something you'll come across if you're working on Azure Cloud. This is this is something you'll come across a lot. Okay, yeah. so that is the reason I thought of including this into my tutorial video. So what what exactly is just in time VM access? Let's let's understand the problem statement and where exactly we can use this just in time VM access. So there's always a threat when when you open a management port. When I say management port. SSH, RDP, that is 22 port, 3389, these are all management ports. Okay. So when your VM is compromised, these port becomes the entry point for the hackers. They will use this port as an entry point. Okay. But the problem is even the legitimate, uh, legitimate users will be using the same port. So we cannot deny access. We cannot close all these ports. So what is the solution? There are multiple other solutions like you will give access to specific IP, you give access to internal IP and things like that. Taken. What is the solution for it? So Microsoft Defender clouds offer just in time. So just in time will what it will do, it will lock down the inbound traffic. It will lock down completely inbound traffic on your VMs, reducing exposure to attack while providing e easy access to connect to VMs when needed. So on need to be, uh, need to need to need to base access, the access will be given. So whenever like I have I'm a legit legitimate user, I want to access to XYZ VM. So we using just in time, we uh, we can enable just in time on that particular VM, and this access will be given for a limited time, at around three hours the maximum, what I can think of. Okay, so. 
just in time even though there are other ways you can secure your vm you can secure your management ports and things like things like that but this is one of the advanced feature what uh, azure defenders provide so let's look into it let's go and have a look and have a walk through of uh, azure defender then later we'll see how exactly we can enable just in time on one particular vm okay so just look for azure defender at the very top or you can just name it as cloud defender also it's one of the same thing microsoft defender for cloud okay guys we are inside microsoft defender for cloud so if you want to look for just look for cloud defender at the very top and it'll, it will redirect you to this screen okay so this is how it looks like on the overview screen you can see my subscription the how many resources they're assessing active recommendation there's no security alert and plus it will give you unhealthy resources so for now i have two unhealthy so what exactly is needed to harden the resources and improve your score okay so i have not done hardening on this vm that is the reason it's in unhealthy resources the secure uh, the it's also giving you a secure score as of now it is 70 so even you can have such scoring done for other cloud providers as well aws and gcp okay it also giving me a security benchmark right now so 41 out of 43 but i think it's a good score so recommendation you can come to the recommendation screen and you can see your recommendation over here it's the same information but in details what you can see you can say set up security alerts and everything this is only available when you have the defender advanced defender service enabled okay now in my inventory i can see my subscription i have vm and on my vm i'm getting again a recommendation over here if i go inside this if i view resources i'm getting machine should have a vulnerability assessment solution okay all this information you get it in microsoft defender for cloud so this is about microsoft defender you can go through it there are multiple options you can even create workbooks once you have the advanced feature option enabled you can have workbooks you can even have alerts and there are many things you can do you can even have a security posture many things you can do okay so i'm able to see all this just because i have the uh, options enabled now in my workload protection if you come down there's an option called in this comes in advanced protection there's an option called just in time vm access so this is something we can go ahead and enable it the just in time vm access we can go ahead and enable it i have two vms inside it but if you want to go and enable there are multiple ways you can go and enable so let me show you an easier way go inside your virtual machine so i have this vm1 which i can request for access so first i will do one thing i will go and remove this port 22 which is there i'll go and delete this port so there's no management port right now so there's no way anyone can access this server now okay so while it is getting deleted this is the public ip what i have it's deleted the rules has been deleted but if i try to go and access this particular server i think this is the same ip yeah if i try to go and access i'm not getting any access even though i'm a legit legitimate user I'm not getting access to this particular server. So using Cloud Defender, there is an option just in time VM access. So how we can enable that? You can come inside uh, networking uh, settings. In setting, there's an option called configuration. In configuration, there is an option called just in time enable. So let's go ahead and enable just in time access for this particular user. Okay. So just in time access has been enabled, but still you cannot connect because for connection you have to go inside connect in connect and you need to I don't need this SSH thing. So you need to request for access. So being a user, I'll go and request for access. So requesting just in time VM access on port 22. If you see this, requesting just in time VM access on port 22 for selected IPs has been approved. Now, if I go and try to access that particular VM, see, I'm able to access now. So this is the beauty of just-in-time. So for specific duration, you can manage this entirely 
uh, from your defender you can manage the timings you can manage uh, which VM you want to give access from the defender also from the workload protection we'll see that later so this is how just in time VM access works okay so what, let me tell you the background what exactly it does so if you go in networking so if you see this what it has done it has added a port 22 for this destination this is what it has added it has added a networking rule okay the only difference is this has been added for a specific time the whole thing can be managed using a workload protection and it's loading the defender for cloud coverage and advanced protection from here you can manage the entire entire thing if you want to remove the access you can do it from here and if you want to delete the access or if you want to take out the so if you want to add some other vms and if you want to enable just in time on top of it you can do it from here also okay so that that's it from this tutorial video and this series please do let me know what did you guys like it what was uh, if there's any improvement or if there's any other security service so which you want me to include as i said azure security is very big so i tried to cover all the important aspect which you would be using in day to day activity okay so thank you very much and if you are new to this channel please do subscribe and if you are an existing member please do like and put down in your comment okay thank you have a great day goodbye